lay people by the thousands relate to Benedictine monasteries because there's something about this simple place. We always say uh, the function of a Benedictine is just simply, and a Benedictine community is to live an ordinary life extraordinarily well. And that's all it is. There is no magic. There, there is no, uh, uh, no special knowledge. There is no internal secret. There is no code. We don't, we don't hold private meetings and chant uh, obscure words. We tell, we tell you how we live and what we're doing. And that's why we do it. And we've been here over 160 years doing it. So by this time, you ought to get the message. This is what it is. I believe that almost everybody that I have ever talked to out of any institution or, or beyond any boundary will relate at least one instance in life when they had a very impacting understanding that there was more than this life. I'm convinced that uh, people have more consciousness of, of uh, life beyond the life in front of them than they realize. I see that as a wisdom call, tap, tap. There's more here, tap, tap. You're not listening, tap, tap. That somehow or other, I know that I had my first um, consciousness of the presence of God when I was 12 or 13 and knew that there was enveloping me some sort of, of presence. I, I, I wouldn't have used the word energy then. Now I say it was an energy. It, it, it touched something in me and I touched something in that. And then I came to the monastery and deepened it. In the first place, one of the things that uh, this world lacks is silence. A monastery like this is built around silence. It's not a rigid silence. It's not a, a, a condemning silence. It's not an unkind silence. It's a reflective silence. It's silence that gives you the right and the space to move inside yourself instead of forever being distracted outside yourself. All And, and the Catholic mind you see goes way, way back. For instance, uh, in the rule we live under, a sixth century document, the fourth degree of humility says, find a wisdom figure, find a spiritual guide, sit with somebody, let them know you, let them help you through the bumps in the road because everybody needs a companion along the way. Now that doesn't mean, um, it, it doesn't even mean a mentor, it means a companion. It means somebody who will hear you and, and re report back to you what really sounds like a, 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 a kind of depth that resonates with themselves or that they want to know more about or that they know you ought to know more about. So here, here we have then uh, a tradition that itself leaps from wisdom figure to wisdom figure. So uh, I'm a young Catholic girl and I grow up in that environment and I'm suddenly face to face with the heroes of life, not the heroes of the church. Yes, the, the church uh, uh, lets you know that they own them, but that wasn't was what it was about. So many of them confronted the church itself. Catherine of Siena, you know, who just told the Pope what was wrong with him and his, and his papacy. That's no small thing. That's, that's a movement into an internal insight to which my whole life is beholden. And I, I see those people uh, alive around us. I see them in this community. My wisdom figures are in large part walking these halls as we sit here. These women have borne the heat of the day with the scripture in one hand, the rule in the other, and the daily newspaper in front of them. And they've done it for 50, 60, 70 years. And they never ask how much they get paid, and they don't know if they've been paid. They come home, we all eat together, pray together, get up the next morning and do it again. Now that, there, there's something about that that 
uh, is not everybody's model, but it is a beacon to what everybody else may be looking for. And that is a life that is simple, doesn't ask a lot, doesn't have a lot. Uh, what they do have, they've built together uh, for the sake of somebody else. It works. It, integrity means it all is integrated. It all comes from the same source, and it's all going the same direction. Uh, those are those are my wisdom figures, and and a uh, hundred that people you've never heard of. I don't want to give leave the impression with anybody else that we create ourselves wholly, fully. We know when we're whole and full, but in most instances, I would argue that most people get where they are because they've been called to it by somebody else, <laughs> and they say, "Carl, I can't do that. I've never done that. I don't want your time." Yeah, I think you can. So here I live in a house of mentors, of generations of mentors. This house was founded uh, in uh, 1956. It was founded by a monastery in Germany that was founded in 1035. And that monastery in Germany was founded by a monastery uh, in Europe that was founded in 700. And all those monasteries are still open, every one of them. The one who was founded in 700, who founded the monastery in 1035, who founded us, is still there. This whole thing is part of a huge process. Uh, I, I, there's a part of me that hesitates to use this metaphor, but maybe it's the most profound one we have at the present time. Those, um, those mountains uh, that are erupting in um, Hawaii and in uh, Guatemala, that lava that's gushing out of that is lava from thousands and thousands of years ago. There's something about this stream of lava that goes through the human condition. It is indeed what Joseph Campbell would call part of the mythos. These are the universal truths, and we, we grow up in every dimension of this search and find one another there just the way Merton did when he went to the east. These monasteries still gush lava. It's still going, and it's all new, and it's all burning now. I see the definition of a community as a body beyond itself. What is going on among these people that may not be going on in general, in society? First, they, they are dedicated to a common uh, life, a way to live, and they're also dedicated to um, a productive life, a life that, that does not exist only for itself alone, but expects to, to its outreach to be uh, to other people who have other needs. So it, it, uh, its, inner, its inner engine is probably of two major parts. It lacks uh, competition, and it understands its own need. The very fact that strangers can live together in peace has got to be, and to do it for over 2,000 years, has got to be some, some sliver of insight into the fact that if people wanted to, they could. So the, the notion that we all came to this house never knowing one another, having no common background, families, money, education, anything, but all wound up here looking for the word, uh, believing that this manner of life is a good way to live, not destructive of anybody, uh, not it, uh, able to, to quell, I think, the natural impulse to um, self-development and, and ownership, possessiveness, and said, no, we just all throw it in together and see what we can do with it. Now, that's a huge, huge piece in a society that uh, is based on individualism and uh, self-development. I mentioned the word, back to the word. She must manifest that word 
and seek it always and nothing else, nothing else. And, uh, you know, we, we stumble along through, through the ages, uh, succeeding some places, uh, failing terribly in others, but the goal is the same. And as long as the goal is the same and the consciousness of that goal is, is the real animating element, that's the glue of this community. It's why each of us came alone and it's what each of us see that we're doing together. And I tell you, it's real. It is just real. History at its moment of greatest brokenness always develops a cadre of saints. They come out of nowhere. They're like grass growing through cement. They're the people you didn't expect to find there. All of that has, has great meaning for me, despite the fact that it sounds, if not simple, simplistic. But I can tell you that Hildegard of Bingen, uh, a German nun from, from the 12th uh, century, is a big figure in my life. Catherine of Siena, Therese of Avila, but then so is Mother Jones, and so is, uh, so was Martin Luther, and so was uh, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. I mean, these are people who had, uh, in my opinion, the integrity of, of the spiritual, the intellectual, the psychological, the emotional, and the social. And it all came together for them. So out of nowhere, and despite everybody else, they simply stood up and articulated their truth and followed it, and followed it without attempting to hurt anybody else in their path.